smell. So smell is incredibly important for survival. Suppose you walk into a house and you smell a gas leak. You'll live because of you, you sensed it. Smell is important for how we detect and talk to one another and know who, who, who's who. Uh, we definitely uh, use olfactory information to be part of the process of picking a mate or who we're friends with and so on. So the olfactory epithelium is lining the nasal cavity and it's sensitive to odorants. So if you look at the respiratory epithelium lining the nasal cavity and the olfactory bulb, which is cranial nerve one, sends fibers, sensory fibers to pick up anything that passes through this cavity, whether it's a pleasant aroma of a rose, or it's something toxic or disgusting or rotting. We're intimately aware of that because what we smell affects what we do and what we eat and where we go, go to survive, not eat a certain food because it's rancid. The olfactory senses are very, very important. So if you look at the microscopic picture of the respiratory epithelium, so you see these receptor cells, receptor cells, then they are exposed to the nasal cavity. So any substance dissolved in moisture is going to be detected by these sensory receptors. How do we tell what's a certain smell or a bad smell or a good smell. Uh, I think we have about 300 different types of receptors. So the substances moving around in the moist nasal cavity and uh, that information is changes the membrane potential of these cells and they send information to the olfactory bulb back to the olfactory bulb right here. And that sends information to uh, parts of the brain that help us identify different types of smell. So that information is processed and we're aware of it. Uh, there are many, many, many genes, about uh, thousands of genes to, dedicated to smell. It's very important, I said, for survival and relationships with other people how we function in the world. Okay, so where do the nerves that first uh, pick up the smell, where do they go? So the olfactory receptors uh, go through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. They synapse with the olfactory bulb and they go to the olfactory cerebral cortex, the hypothalamus, and the limbic system. Now we're into taste. Another incredibly important sense receptor and special senses. Uh, we have taste buds in the tongue, uh, taste hairs, and so on. And mixed with olfaction, with smell, we have. That's how we taste uh, substances. Uh, so we can sense salt, sweet, sour, bitter. Also sense umami, which is uh, oriental flavor. Uh, but the synapses go into the medulla oblongata. So gustatory receptors are found all over the tongue. You can map the tongue and determine where the receptors are because sour receptors will be in a certain location, bitter, salty, sweet. So 
different receptors are located in different areas of the tongue. So the tongue surface is specialized to sense different taste sensations. If you look at a taste receptor in the tongue, you can see that it's open to the exterior. So these taste receptors, when stimulated, when they come into contact with a sugary taste or a sour taste, uh, different receptors will tell us that's sweet, that's sour, that's bitter, and so on. So these receptors change a chemical stimulation into a nervous spike or a nerve spike, and that goes on the way to uh, taste coordination points in the body. So these gustatory receptors, you can see, have these little hairs, and they're connected to nerves that carry information about the type of the type of taste stimulation and that's going to be carried into parts of the brain and we're aware of those tastes okay olfactory information is routed directly to the cerebral hemispheres powerful effects on mood and behavior so when you have integration with olfaction and gustatory sensations, that is strongest and clearest and very important for enjoying food or making sure food is not rotten or rancid or full of putrefaction. So these are two very important senses, olfaction and gustatory sensations. The eye. Now let's just look at the structure of the eye. So there'll be diagrams in WebAssign. So make sure you study and know all the parts. So uh, I'm not going to ask you about the lacrimal caruncle, but eyelashes, eyelid, uh, lateral canthus, Sclera is the outside surface of the eyeball. The iris is where the pupil is, and so on. So the tear gland or the lacrimal gland is constantly secreting fluid to keep the surface of the eye clean, to prevent infections, and those Lacrimal gland secretions as tears will end up in the lacrimal sac and through this lacrimal canal and will end up into the nasal cavity. So there's constantly fluid from the tear gland or the lacrimal gland that's flowing over the eye and that's gonna cleanse the eye, get rid of dust and help make sure there's no infections. We have intrinsic eye muscles. I think there's some website on those. Make sure you know the intrinsic muscles. Uh, so the lateral rectus, the inferior rectus, the inferior oblique, the superior rectus, and the superior oblique. So there's muscles all around the eye and they're gonna be involved in the constant eye movement that is necessary for being able to have vision that tracks the environment so you know where you are uh, and so on. So those muscles, if you look at the eye from the front, you can see that these intrinsic eye muscles, superior rectus, lateral rectus, medial rectus, inferior rectus, uh, you can see how they're going to move the eyeball superior oblique, inferior oblique. So the eye has all these different layers. So you have the outer sclera and then into the uh, layer where the blood vessels occur and where your receptors are. So you know these in general, 
Notice that your lens is suspended in behind the pupil. Here's the cornea, which is part of the outer layer of the eye. Uh, let's go back here. So we have a fibrous tunic, a vascular tunic, and a neural tunic. So here we have the fibrous tunic, the vascular tunic where the blood vessels are, and the nervous tunic where the receptors, the rods and cones are located. Okay, we'll finish up the eye structure. So make sure you're aware of these three coats or surroundings of the eyeball. So there's fibrous tuning for structure to keep the eyeball, making sure it doesn't collapse, blood supply, and nerves. Okay. Take a look at this. Uh, they'll, you'll see from WebAssign what you got to know. Okay, let's see where we're going to stop. Let's stop there. Come back to here. Stop recording for this one.